you know, uh, after you got out of, uh, you know, uh, searching and destroying and doing the Ranger stuff, um, you got into like journalism. Is that how that kind of transitioned? And you became yeah. A yeah. So, yeah. So, so I, I ended up getting out of the army and I really, I really didn't have no idea what I was going to do. Um, so I'm like, I'm going back to an nation and the Navajo nation is nothing. It's like nothing there really. It's, it's the same as you just left. Kind of, yeah. It's, it, and, and in essence, one of the things one of my friends would like talk about in Iraq and Afghanistan, I remember a conversation we had, I was like, man, I can't believe people live like this. And my, my response was like, dude, this is how I live. Like, this is, this is the Navajo nation, man. Like, this is what yeah. it's like. It's not that big a deal to me. Like, and I was like, what are you kidding me? Are you telling me that there's in America, there's a place that's similar to a third world country. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's a Navajo nation for you. And so I get back and I was like, man, what, what am I going to do? So I actually went up to the local newspaper <laughs> and I walked up and I was just basically like, hey, I'm an Army Ranger with special operations. I can learn quick. I'm a fast learner. Take, give me a job. And there's like the editor looked at me. He goes, have you ever like done photos or writing before? I was like, I've been a photographer. I've, I've jumped out of an airplane. I've, I've taken my camera with me. And, um, I've, I've done, you know, it's that kind of stuff, rock marches and training like shots with my own camera. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, it's like, can you do anything else? I was like, I, I was like, I, I can learn to write because on deployments, I was actually, I had like a little diary or slash you know, journal called journal, sure. not diary. Right? Yeah. It's yeah, a diary. And, um, Dear so diary. Was, oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> it's actually a release really honestly. Okay. It, yeah. It's good to have it. Yeah. Yes. So, so I would write, I would write in this. Um, and um, so that's kind of like where my writing kind of came about. And um, so I just, they, they said no to me. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just join the Navajo police force. And right. this big dude came out like huge. Uh, I'm not, I'm not talking big, like as like muscular, I mean like fat yeah. and came out and was like, he looked at me and was, I was like, Hey, I, you know, I, I want to join. I'm a former young ranger. Uh, it's been about two months. Like I, I let, let me do this. And, um, I'm legit the dude was like oh okay well just so you know we've had green berets and navy seals who cannot hack our academy our academy is extremely strenuous and army rangers can't even hack it marines can't even hack it so i just not saying that you're not going to hack it but a lot of people can't hack our academy and i was like man fuck this guy i ain't gonna fucking work with this you know yeah. like the police force that comes out and like tells me that already i was like man fuck this so i ended up going to school for a little bit and um during school it's kind of like on the road to journalism now i two of my friends as civilians went back to iraq to help the kurdish to fight isis so i was like man that's fucking bomb that's baller and um you know, I, I was like, man, that's what I want to do. I want to be doing stuff like that. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a guy of adventure. Like, I'm not supposed to be in school. So I took off, kind of went traveling for a little bit. And I was in Alaska. And then, and then Stan and Rock was kicking off. Um, my cousin invited me to go with him. So I went there. Really didn't have no, like, expectation of what was going to happen. It, and it, it, it blew up into this whole big, big, Huge. big thing. My best friend. And so I, I get there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, I just, I, I met a lot of people there and it, like a lot of it kind of reminded me of like being on deployment where it was like, was now on the other side. Like all these people are like talking about, yeah, you know, there's, they have this on us. They got that on us, got the numbers on us. They're sending people in their camps. And like, at the same time, a lot of these Vietnam veterans are like doing their fucking intelligence gathering on like the police over there. And like, I, I was, for the most part, I stayed out of all of that. Like I was like there, like, right. But I was like, kind of, that was for the most part staying out of it, kind of like worried about my own little camp of what, what these guys were doing. And uh, I ended up meeting a bunch of journalists there, like inadvertently, or kind of become friends with them. Same, same mindset. I didn't realize it at the time. And I was just kind of curious, you know, and they were curious. And they wanted to know about the world. I wanted to know more about the world. And so I started talking to them. One of them was a French photojournalist. He's, award, he's an award-winning journalist now. He took me under his wing and showed me the ropes of, of journalism. And I started, like, walking around and hanging out with all these people he was talking to, watching how he interacted with people. And I was like, wow, man, this is cool. This journalist, um, it's kind of a quick background. He was in Ukraine during revolution. He was hanging out with the French Foreign Legion when the war was going on, I believe in Sudan. 
and like he almost got murdered by uh, by someone with the axe and he said the dude got killed like right in front of him so like i was like wow dude you were the ukraine revolution he since he's since gone back to ukraine during during the war and like yes. he's got he's he came back now so i keep in touch with him still and um so I learned, I got to learn a lot from him. And that's when I kind of was like, I'm going to be a journalist. Like there's, there's not a lot of native voices. There's not a lot of native journalists out there. And I really want to speak on a lot of these issues that are going on on the reservation. So I got in into that um, very like first big story that I was working on. I had no idea what I was doing. It was kind of a, kind of a green journalist. I, and I was still kind of like riding off that whole ranger, you know, I still kind of had that cocky attitude and, um, I was kind of like roaming around. So I ended up going to the Tejona Autumn Reservation, which is near the border of Mexico and Arizona. So southern Arizona, I should say. And it's right near the border. And so I, I heard like stories of like the cartel going into, not on the reservation and knocking on doors and basically like forcing these people to, to, to be drug runners for them. And so I was like, wow, that's really, that's really interesting. And, so I was like talking to people about that. Um, I was like getting contacts with the border patrol, and one one dude I was able to finally kind of talk to him, and we kind of set up a time. But before that happened, before I, before I cut it and stopped the story, I was like I went to this bar because I was like I asked him like some like I was going to school at U of A University of Arizona. I asked one of my colleagues. I was like, Hey man, what a uh, what is like a bar that's owned by the cartel or club here in tucson do you know of and he was like uh i don't know man like he's like uh but this one place kind of seems kind of sketchy like right. we really go there so i went there <laughs> of course. i went there and like i don't know spanish but i look but i look spanish i look mexican okay, so yeah. i was just like yeah so I was, yeah, yeah. yeah so i went in and like guys were like asking me for like what i want to drink in spanish I, I could kind of understand them from just from a lot of my friends who were mexican yeah i was like i was like i'll take a <laughs> yeah yeah i'll take, take a cerveza, cerveza. Like, <laughs> yeah uh, uno cerveza i was like si. oh okay yeah yeah exactly so i was there and i was just like minding my own business just drinking drinking a beer and kind of wanting to see what this place was about all of a sudden i see this dude just like starting something like some some shit was shit, shit was going down and like the bouncers they didn't like throw him out man they just started beating the shit out of him they beat this guy like just beat the shit out of him and like they didn't throw him out they said they look to the corner they look in the corner of like some group of guys in the corner of the room and then the, you just see the guy go and then they just fucking dragged him to another room in the back and i was like oh shit this is this is it like I mean, I'm here right now, and um, I ended up. Uh, like I said, I'm a green journalist. So I don't. I, I don't fucking know what I was doing. I, I mean, I, I could probably get a story now at a more, um, but with more thought process and without an and immersive actually, uh, experience. Yeah, into the, becoming the story, <laughs> yeah. like you're creating the story yeah. of the story. Yeah, and it's like, oh shit! Now so, they're gonna write about me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't get invited. So the story got killed because I got invited to, I got invited to this Mexican party. So I go for New Year's. So I go there and I'm kind of doing my thing. Just, I'm just talking to people. I'm not really trying to do a story. And like some, I was like sitting, I went and I was like, my buddy was sitting with me and then he, he walked off and I was at this bar and this guy came up to me, alligator boots on, pants, huge buckle, silk fucking dress shirt, creased oh, really hat. Guy. No, yeah <laughs> so that buckle me, obviously and, you know it's like yeah 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 dude you're like yeah what's up <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he, he sits in front of me and then he's just he, he's just he's being super calm he's like hey you want a beer and i was like so he bought me a beer i'm drinking a beer with him and um he was like talking to me for a little bit and he was like hey you're a journalist i was like yeah he goes you're working on this story about you know the cartel but i was like yeah i am he's like mm, yeah you should stop that story I was like, no, I have to write it. Like, I gotta, and because, and then he's like, no, 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 you should stop. Right? And I was like, nah, no, like, I'm like who, who's this guy? Yeah. I was like, who are you? And he's like, oh, you know who I am. I was like, no, I never met you before. He's like, no, you know who I am. I was like, looking, I was like, kind of like, I was like, mm, kind of like looked him up, and I was like, how do I get a boots? You know, I was like, silk dress shirt, and I was like, 
Oh, okay. I know who you are. And he's like, yes. I'm just going to ask you kindly, stop the story. Nothing's going to happen. Just, just stop. And I was like, all right, stop it. <laughs> yeah. So that was it. I, I, I never stopped. I never continued with that story. Um, I mean, now it's a totally different, totally different ball game. Um, but at the I time, bro, up, you're uh, like, okay, you know, I, I get up, it. Uh, you know, you re- you realized it was for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, I kind of saw myself as like one of those old school journalists, like getting the story, you know, like, um, I was like, oh man, this is, this is not how we should be going about getting the story. Like things are, things should be different. I, I learned a lot from that too, as well. Yeah. Journalism, uh, and journalists are uh, a target, you know, and, uh, you know, they are uncovering things and, uh, like Khashoggi, who was, you know, butchered, uh, at the embassy by, you know, who we all know did it, uh, had it done, you know, and he was sawn up into little pieces cause he was going after the stories. You know, he's mm-hmm. in so deep into these stories that just he wouldn't stop. So I mean, yeah. journalism journalism is a I don't want to say a dying craft. You know what I mean? It, it needs to continue. We have to keep uh, the freedom of press and journalism out there. It has to keep going. People have to take mm-hmm. the torch like yourself and just you know you're like, hey, it's a different day now, right? You'd have a different means of doing what you want to do, and maybe not so involved, but. Well, that green journalist out there that you were is trying to chase that same thing and they're going to find themselves in the same position. Oh, yeah. 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 You know? And, you know, yeah, I was just very, um, I was very, very fortunate, I guess you could yes. say. And um, I, I ended up eventually around that time period. Um, I actually dropped out of college at that time and got a job offer from, from one of my buddies. He's a combat controller. <clears throat> and um, he was like, Hey man, I got this. I just got, I got this contract, which you'd be interested in. We'd be doing um, intelligence with the Royal Air Force with drones. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So yeah. um, I did that for for a good minute, and basically just like helping train the Royal Air Force in intelligence gathering and to establish a terrorist network organization. Mm-hmm. And from that, and I was like the ground maneuver, so I was like the dude who would like kind of like set up the the guys and kind of display how. You know, people would move around and walk around and stuff like that. How how they would interact with like in a gunfight. So like I was I was doing that. Um, eventually, I got to the point where I was actually the guy like in the talk. You know, like talking to talking to the uh, tactical uh, operation command, right? A talk T O C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you're in like a tactical yeah. operation command center. You yeah, it's mobile, yeah. but I'm not sure if this is mobile. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, we, so I'm just explaining yeah. to my listener what the talk is, right? Cause you're inside of a command and control center where everybody's mm-hmm. making decisions and there's probably maps and things being pointed at and you're in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I kind of got to do, I got to do that. And, um, and like my buddies were just like the majority of them were like tack B's and majority of um, common controllers. So I was like the only army ranger there. Who yeah. Was, air force, all air force like, tactical party. Yeah. T- yeah. P, yeah. Uh, combat controller. Yeah. Clear an airfield. Yeah. Making sure that it's clear to yeah. land. You know, yeah, they're cool badass. Dudes, man. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, they are, man. Cool Connor guys. Matthews, cool guys. Give you a shout out, bro. He just made UFC. Connor Matthews, <laughs> combat controller. <laughs> give him a shout out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You. We, yeah. Well, um, we we ended up I ended up working with those guys and they basically kind of trained me up in a lot of that and it was like wow this is cool this is really fun I wish I was a tech P. Um <laughs> yeah and the Air and Force when when I was going through boot they're the only guys you saw at basic training but they had already gone through all their you know training and they were like in these black flight suits no one else wears black flight suits everyone else is like in you know camis or BDUs camouflage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's these like six guys hanging over an edge of a railing, like smoking with baseball hats and black flight suits, mm-hmm. just big American flags on them, like Delta Force, like the movie. And I'm just like, yeah, bro, those guys just get to walk around and they probably have wheelbarrows to carry every pair of their balls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's <laughs> <Just> like, okay, <laughs> here we are. What do you need from us? <laughs> Parking our wheelbarrows. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I I did that, and I actually took a lot of those skills, and I started to apply that to journalism, and um, that 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 upped my game like a hundred percent. 
And man, like now I'm like this full fledged journalist, and yeah. like I'm now going chasing stories now, like on a whole different level. Now it's like, okay, I'm not the one doing it. Now I'm talking to people who are in it, talking to people who like you know are, are there who witness these stuff and then i go and i talk to them and verify them so a lot of these people like i really like one of the, one of them was a girl she you know she had top secret clearance she was um signals intelligence and so like i would like reach out to her about like specific things that were happening and so i talked to her about stuff and and so i started to establish like uh, you know and veterans basically yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and these like in these spaces and kind of find out what's going on like human what's going right. on in the human community yeah. yeah 